Welcome to Junior Historians. I'm Darcy, the middle school librarian at the St. Charles Public Library. Joining me is Lindsay Judd, the director of the St. Charles History Museum. This month, the Junior Historians are exploring the history of Pottawatomie Park in St. Charles. Lindsay, I remember coming to this park when I was young, but I know Pottawatomie is much older than I am. Was this land always used as a park for St. Charles? This area was originally purchased by Calvin Ward for $75 in 1835. You may remember that Ward was one of the founding fathers of our city who helped plan out the town and build the dam. His son, Lorenzo, built a large home on the site with the money he earned from, as a butter and cheese producer. The property remained in the Ward family until developers started showing interest in the in land the 1880s. in 1885. The Great Western Railroad purchased the southern portion of the land to build tracks. Developers who were planning to build a large hotel along the tracks and river purchased the rest of the land. Oh. Um, so what happened to the Ward house? Unfortunately, the mansion burned down in the early 1900s. Oh. Um, what type of items were placed on the property in order to turn it into a park? Well, first there were picnic tables, playground equipment, and a refreshment stand. In 1892, a large pavilion was built along the river to house dances. Part of the shoreline was converted to make a swimming beach. Oh, wow, fancy. Um, I believe Potawatomi is now part of the St. Charles Park District. How did it go from a private park to a public park? Well, in 1911, Bert C. Norris, uncle to Lester J. Norris, asked Kane County for permission to form a park district. Permission was granted, and the property fell under the ownership of the St. Charles Township establishing the park as the first public park in Illinois under the Illinois Park Act of 1911. So Potawatomi is the name of a native tribe that once lived on these lands. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Certainly. The Potawatomi once lived up and down the Fox River Valley during the warmer months. The white settlers came to the area in the 1830s and native people were forcibly removed, leaving them to head west. In an attempt to honor the tribes they misplaced decades earlier, our town placed a Native American statue in the park in 1915. In a horrible turn of events, the statue was continuously damaged until it was destroyed by vandals in the 1960s. The remnants of the sculpture are on display at the St. Charles History Museum, which we will take a look at later. It wasn't until 1988 that a new statue was created and placed just south of Potawatomi Park along the river. At the dedication of the new statue were members of four bands of the Potawatomi. They gave the statue a name to give it a pro protective spirit. The sculpture was named Equibet, which means watching over. That's nicer. I'm glad that we were able to explore that a little bit more. Um, so nowadays this park has a lot to offer. Can you tell us a little bit more about the development of Potawatomi's offerings? The 1930s was a rough time in our U.S. history with the Great Depression, but this was the time that Potawatomi Park saw most of its enhancements. A large grant from the Works Progress Administration, or WPA, was secured by Albert Swanson, a park board member. These funds, along with very generous donations from Delora and Lester Norris and the Park Commission, helped create upgrades to the public space. Upgrades included drinking fountains, a nine-hole golf course designed by the pioneer of golf course architecture, Robert Trent Jones Sr., an amphitheater, which uses the natural hill of the valley for seating and sound projection, improved tennis courts, a baseball diamond, a swimming pool, and a recreation building. In 1991, the Potawatomi Park Community Center opened. It continues to provide St. Charles with gym, locker rooms, dance studios, craft studios, preschool rooms, and office space. The center expanded in 2003 to add more space for adult activities and preschool program areas. Wow, that is a lot of things. Um, so when were the river boats introduced? In the mid-1940s, a man named Chet Anderson was working at the park's concession stand. He came up with an idea to buy a boat and offer rides to people visiting the park. In 1945, he bought his first boat called the Honeymoon Queen. Rides cost 35 cents, which is about $5.12 in today's money. He captained his boats for almost 40 years until his son, Rich Anderson, and another captain took over the business. 
In 2018, the St. Charles Park District purchased the business and continues to run boat trips using two of the boats built in the 1980s. Um, when was the mini golf course added? 50 years ago, in the late 1960s, the Oak Valley Miniature Golf Course, named for the abundance of oak trees in the area, was added to Potawatomi Park. Since then, the name has changed to Riverview, but still offers 18 holes and plenty of character. Along with mini golf, Riverview also offers non-motorized boat rentals, which includes canoes, kayaks, and pedal boats. Can we talk a little bit about this beautiful pavilion? Absolutely. Also known as the Grand Gazebo, it was originally constructed in 1892. After 1910, a cement floor was added to allow for dancing. In the 1950s, the tower portion of the structure was removed. In 1988, the gazebo at Lincoln Park on the west side of the river was built to visually mimic Potawatomi's original tower. By 2000, the whole pavilion was warped and tilting towards the river, so it was torn down to allow the structure to be rebuilt with new materials. The new structure was built to match as closely to the original design as possible, including the tower. Construction was made possible by private donations. In 2009, the pavilion tower was dedicated in honor of James and Joanne Collins for their contributions to the park and the city. Have there been any new additions to the park in the last few years? Just this year, the new sensory garden was unveiled. It includes an inclusive playground, musical play area, log steppers, vine tunnel, bago games, and a picnic pavilion. The St. Charles Kiwanis Cl Club raised funds to install a wheelchair swing, which is the first of its kind in the Fox Valley. Also added was a native plant demonstration garden along the west side of the community center. The garden features native trees, shrubs, wildflowers, grasses, sedges, ferns, and vines, and it encourages gardeners to see what the native beauties can look like in their own gardens, while also helping support area wildlife. There is a peaceful path running through the garden, complete with benches for resting. And let me just add that that is one of my personal favorite hidden gems here in St. Charles. I'll have to take a look at it later. Um, I remember Miss Caitlin um, from the library made a video recently showcasing all the new things that Potawatomi has to offer. Um, people interested in learning more about the park today um, should check out Miss Caitlin's Neighborhood on the library's YouTube channel. Uh, Lindsay, where can our junior historians learn more? To learn more about St. Charles and the history of St. Charles, click the link in the description below to explore the St. Charles History Museum's website. Thank you. Now join us as we head back to the St. Charles History Museum and head inside to explore. Welcome back to the St. Charles History Museum. As we talked about before, here on display is the head of the original Native American statue that was erected in Potawatomi Park in 1915. Unfortunately, it was vandalized in the 1960s. Here we have part of the statue. Don't forget to get your grab and go kits here at the St. Charles History Museum to the end of the month while supplies last.